this morning turn to him 161 161 <laughs> Uh, a few that we need to mention. 
Uh, Jimmy Stoker family, this is JC's grandpa. He passed away uh, yesterday morning. So be in prayer for this family. Uh, Colin Carr family, Colin Carr family. Uh, a lot, I think a lot of people call him Sonny. Uh, be in prayer for this family. Uh, he passed away, I believe, Friday. Uh, so we need to be in prayer for that. Miss Sharon Wigley uh, has not been feeling well. She's not here this morning. We need to remember her. Miss Sue's not uh, this morning not feeling well. Uh, so be in prayer for her as well and, and Brother Bam. Um, uh, is there anyone else that we need to mention this morning? In prayer request. See, we, you know, we still got a lot of people at uh, holiday weekend. A lot of people that are vacationing and, and that sort of thing. I know that... Uh, uh, we've got some that are, that are gone this week. Be in prayer for them for traveling and, and that everything may be uh, safe in their travels. Uh, I, I know uh, uh, some of them are coming back in today and some of them are, are leaving out today and that sort of deal. So, But be in prayer for that. Um, was there any others? Any unspoken prayer requests? Show by lifted hand. Pick a hand. Pick a hand and pray for them uh, this week. Uh, and and uh, the Lord knows the need. And, and just pray for that need. Um, business meeting tonight, as far as announcements go, uh, we are going to meet with the, uh, the, the uh, mission committee. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a brief meeting. Uh, I'd say 5.30. We have a part prayer. But 5.30. Uh, we'll meet up at just 5, 5.30 uh, and uh, just a, a short little deal let you know what I, what I, when I talk, what I talk to folks of, at the meeting and that sort of deal, where we're at with that. Uh, but business meet tonight, so come back as we have some of the, do some of the Lord's business. Uh, there was something else I was going to tell you. Uh, this coming Sunday, if everything goes how we think, and you know how that goes sometimes. Doesn't go how you think, but if everything goes how I think, uh, we think uh, we may have a baby Saturday. So it's not the due date, but it's just how it's been. Uh, see, we go Friday for they do something or other, and I'm not. I'm really not sure. I'm not trying to be modest. I don't remember what it's called, but anyway, uh, and and uh, usually the baby's been the next day, so. If that be the case, uh, Brother James will be, he's going to hes gonna uh, give, bring a message that morning to us and that evening if, if, if it goes that way. Um, I would call another preacher, but, you know, then, then have to tell him, oh, never mind, he's going to labor, I'm going to preach. So I just told him to be on standby, and he said he'd been praying for a baby to come on Saturday so that he could preach. Uh, but, uh, so, so if that go, if that's how it goes, Brother James will, will, will bring you something, and I know he'll do a good job. And he said he had a whole book of stuff he could talk about, so uh, he said he'd find something. But um, if not, I'll be here. Um, but but uh, whatever the case is, I'll just be praying that all goes well there. Um, I had another announcement that I didn't write down I forgot about. Anybody remember what it was? It was in my head? Yeah, ladies on the right now. All right, ladies auxiliary tomorrow night. That wasn't it. But. I'll think about it during the song, and I'll just holler it out real quick so I don't forget it. But uh, anyway, um, this week tonight, uh, like I said, may not be with next Sunday. Who knows? Uh, the Lord does. But but uh, if it be the case, and if if she if if the baby carries and it comes on Monday or Tuesday, uh, then then you know maybe different. But we'll. We'll see uh, what, what goes on there. Um, wanted to uh, thank you. Uh, this is this Sunday is six years that I've been with Holly Springs. So I'm uh, very blessed. Thank you for uh, not kicking me out yet. Uh, you know, the, the Lord has uh, definitely blessed. I, a lot has changed in six years. I mean, uh, the, you, the church looks different. Uh, the church building looks different. Uh, uh, we have... New people, we've lost some people, uh, some, some dear people as well, and uh, uh, have passed on. And I uh, need to remember them. I, I always will. Uh, you see me uh, become a dad. That's a big deal. Uh, I, I said I've grown uh, spiritually, 
mentally and a little bit physically, but we ain't gonna talk about it. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, some of y'all, some of y'all didn't have quite as many gray hairs when I got here, neither. So, uh, you know, six years is, it doesn't seem like a long time, but uh, I'm very thankful for it. I'm thankful to be at Holly Springs, and uh, I plan on being here just as long as the Lord wants me to be here. Uh, but uh, I, I, I appreciate. I want to tell you I appreciate you. I said I'd, I'll always be able to remember Miss Mary's birthday because that's the, it's the same day. And then Brother Eddie's birthday is me and Jason's anniversary. I said, well, I'll always remember y'all's birthday. So uh, they got good birthdays. But anyway, uh, glad that you're here uh, again and, and so thankful to be able to be here at Holly Springs. And uh, the choir's going to sing this morning, but before that, let's have a word of prayer. Brother James, would you word it for us? Heavenly Father, we come as always with thankful hearts, Lord, that the doors are open and we are allowed, Lord, to come worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we pray that that's exactly what we do. We pray, Lord, that we be found here, Lord, in the center of your will, doing your work as you have us to do. We pray, Lord, for the missionary committee. We pray that you would send us the man that you would have us to support, that uh, you would teach us the things that we need to know, that we would do the things, Lord, that we might send a missionary out, Lord, and that uh, many souls might be saved and baptized and added to your church. Lord, we pray for our sick this morning. You know each one. Those that's on our prayer list and those that's been mentioned this morning. We pray for the bereaved families, Lord. Just, uh, just hold them in close in thy great arms, Lord, and may they feel your presence and your comfort as only you can give. Lord, we, we pray for our nation. We pray, Lord, uh, uh, that she can stand. We pray for our turning. We pray for revival in the land. We thank you so much for uh, what our forefathers stood for, uh, what they did in your name, and the blessings, Lord, that you were able to give us because of that. Lord, we pray for the salvation of souls. We pray, Lord, that uh, uh, we would be out and about in this community, and that uh, you would see fit, Lord, to bring people by, Lord, that the preacher might preach and the Holy Spirit might do his work, and, Lord, that their souls might be saved and added to the church. Lord, we pray for our upcoming homecoming. We pray for our upcoming revival. We pray that you be with Brother Cody as he goes and speaks to a sister church, Lord, that uh, uh, you would give him the things to say that this church needs to hear. And help us, Lord, be always supportive of our pastor. Lord, be with the choir now as they sing this special. Forgive us for our sins. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The choir is going to sing America to you. <laughs> Oh, 
get past that first verse, I'm not sure. I gotta have the book right there, you know. That's what Brother Will, he said he was gonna be mean. He didn't he didn't tell me he was doing the third verse, so I messed up. Then he said that he got like messed up because he was laughing at me and stuff. You know? Uh, that's that's all right, that's what he did. Uh, but anyway, uh, at this time let's go around and greet one another this morning.
know, so I'm glad we're in one of those churches where you kind of, you know, you can't turn around and, you know, laugh. We ought to be able to laugh and have fun here. I'm glad we can. Uh, even if it's at my expense, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. This is the time that we've set aside to receive the offering for the Lord. We pray that the Lord will bless it and that he would use it mightily here at this place and that we could uh, do whatever it is he has for us to do. And uh, uh, we have this, and then we have the mission box in the back if the Lord leads you to give there as well for our missions. Uh, fun. But uh, before we do that, let's ask a blessing over this offering. Ask that the Lord would use it. Brother Will, would you lead us in that prayer, please? Sir? Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, come grace once again. Just thank you for the privilege together here as your church, Lord. And I just pray that this time, Lord, that, that set aside for giving, Lord, that it will be done cheerfully. Uh, and, and with an a honorable heart, Lord, knowing that it's your work in this earth, Lord, that there's so many lost about us that need to know Jesus and the free pardon of sin and the, and the joy that we feel, Lord, and the fellowship, and we just thank you for it, Father. There's a, a world that's going through so much turmoil outside. We thank you for your peace that your gospel brings, Lord, not only with you, but the peace that we can have uh, as things about us are tumultuous. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
from front to back is about our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, but this morning I want to look at this passage of scriptures and I got a bunch of questions I want to I, I want to ask and I, I want the answers but I kind of already know the answers. Um, the first question is very generic and very general and it's simply what's happened? What has happened? Uh, we talk about today being America's birthday and it is and uh, not today, but this weekend, uh, Tuesday will be in, uh, the day that we recognize uh, America's birth, our independence, and, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but more so than just in America, but, but that's what we know. But what has happened in our world today? Even just over the last few years, what has happened? We've seen people turn away from God. We've seen people turn away from God's house. We've seen people turn, families turn away. Homes turn away. Uh, we've seen people will come to church. We've seen churches close. And we've seen people come to church and, and, and never change anything about the life that they're living. They just come and they're present. And, and really what we're doing is we're playing church on Sundays. And we're still playing Christian throughout the week maybe. But we're not allowing God to change our hearts, to change our lives. We're allowing the world to push us here and there and sway us all over the place. What has happened? And how do we fix it? The title of our message this morning is Back to the Heart of Worship. Folks, as a, as a, as a child of God, we got to get back to the heart of our worship. And, and, and as a church family, we've got to get back to the heart of our worship. Uh, worship is so important. Uh, I think a lot of times that uh, we, we uh, preaching, it's important. Uh, uh, an outreach program, that's important. Uh, a, a children's ministry, that's important. But I want to tell you something that is also very important is worship. There's a right way to worship and there's a wrong way to worship. How's the right way to worship? Well, now, a bunch of people got a bunch of opinions about that, don't they? You, yourself, probably have an opinion about what's the right way to worship. I have an opinion. But I want to tell you what the Bible says about it is that we are to worship in spirit and in truth. And as long as it's done in spirit and in truth, it is the right way to worship. Now, we've got people... That, that, that think, well, you don't need to do it this way, you don't need to do it that way. And guess what? Preferences are okay. I have a preference, you have a preference, but at the end of the day, if we're worshiping in spirit and in truth, we're giving God the glory, and that's all that matters. That's right. But we've got to get back to the heart of worship. What is our heart to be directed at in our worship? <coughs> to the Lord. Our worship should never be Directed at a person. Our worship should never be directed at a church. If you're here today and you're worshiping this church, uh, you've done it wrong. And you need to repent. If you're here today and you're worshiping to, for a show to let people know that you're worshiping, it's wrong. Uh, you need to repent. If you worship, and God forbid, you worship something else other than God... You need to repent, and you're wrong. So, well, 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 I don't. Well, I don't sing songs to such and such and this and that. Well, listen. Anything you put above God, you're worshiping. You made an idol. It's become your God. If you put it in front of God, and we need to repent of those sort of things. You know, I could get fired up before our sermon, and I could go into what things that if we just talk about our country and the things that have happened that we have put in front of God, and guess what's happening? We're seeing. The results of that. We're seeing the results. Uh, our, our children will feel the results of it. We're, 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 hey, we're seeing that it played out right in front of our eyes. You look in the Old Testament and the nation of Israel. What happened when they started putting things above God? It didn't turn out very well for them. And guess what? We're seeing the very same thing. Yet, what do we do about it? There's a lot of times that we just accept it. And, 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 and 
we chalk it up to, well, that's just the way things are. Oh, I'm going to blame. I'm good at blaming. I don't know about you, but I can blame somebody else for something I've done real quick. I can blame. We'll blame people. Oh, our government. That president we got, that, that Senate we got, that House of Representatives we got, the, you know, this and that and all the other things. This is their fault, them lost folks, them uh, liberals or them conservatives, whichever side you want to fall on. All of that, that's where the problem lies. Folks, the problem began in the homes whenever we decided that other things were going to be more important than God. That's the problem. That's the root of it. And if we ever want to get back, we've got to start putting God first. We've got to get back to our heart of worship. Read with me. It's beginning in verse 23 of First Chronicles chapter 16. It says, Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day His salvation. Declare His glory among the heathen, His marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. But uh, for all the gods, little, little, little g God, little g God, for all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor in His presence. Strength and gladness are in His, his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindred of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Bring an offspring and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear Him. A fear before him all the earth, the Lord, or the world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad, let the earth rejoice, and let men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof, let the fields rejoice, and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the woods sing out at the presence of God, because he cometh to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And say ye, save us, O God, of our salvation, and gather us and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name, and glory be thy praise. Verse 36, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in the word for Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning praying for your people, God. Praying for those who have uh, experienced salvation. Those who maybe have wandered away from your fold. Maybe those of us who are here today, who maybe we've just been going through the motions, Lord, that we would get back to the heart of worship. And Lord, you are the heart of worship. I pray, Lord, that you be worshipped and glorified here today. I pray you already have been. I pray that you will be through this message in each heart. And, Lord, I pray that as we leave, we'll be worshipping you. I pray as we're away from your house, we're worshipping you. And I pray that as we come back, we're already in a mindset of worship. Lord, I ask that you just be with this message today. That you would hide me behind the cross. That it would be your word spoken today, not mine. And that if there be someone here who needs to come to know you as their personal Savior, that today would be the very day that they would come to know you as that Savior. For you're the only one that can save. And I ask all these things in the one who can save and the one who died on the cross that we can be saved. His name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Back to the heart of worship. I want to ask you before we begin, do you remember when you got saved? Amen. I remember when I got saved. You remember the first time that you was in a church service after being saved? That song was felt a little bit different, didn't it? That, that, that preaching felt a little bit different. You ever, you ever caught yourself in a church service on the flip side, kind of just going through the money, singing up? You sang, we sang that song a million times. I know that every word that's, I can sing it while I'm asleep. And we're just singing words. You know, 
Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. You know, doesn't sound very joyful. We ought to sing that song. Love lifted me. What is it? You ever thought about what you're talking about? It lifted you out of? Love lifted you out of your sin. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin and love, the love He gave lifted us out. We ought to sing, love lifted me. I'm out of the sin. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm engulfed in the love of God. We've got to get back to the heart of our worship. Let's begin uh, breaking down this scripture in verse 23 again. We're going to look at 23 through 26, the first part here. It says, Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant. Oh, oh, isn't that beautiful? 23 is in the same place as it is on the other side on verse 17. Chapter 17. I knew that wasn't right. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods, for the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heaven. Get back to the heart of worship. Who is should be the focus of our heart of worship that's God. And what is the first thing we have to do? We worship Him because He is the truth God that brings salvation. We look at that passage of Scripture. It says, uh, But sing unto the Lord all the earth show forth from day to day His salvation. How do we show His salvation? Is salvation something you can hand to somebody? Is salvation something you can wrap up and present to someone? Is salvation something you carry around in your pocket that when you get to the, you see someone say, hey, here, look at this salvation? Or do you show them by how you live your life? Amen. You show them by how you worship God. You say, well, well, well I, you know, I'm not in church when I'm out there. You don't have to be in church to worship God. Matter of fact, it ought to be the, the, the place you worship God the least amount of time. Because we're not here every day. We ought to worship God everywhere, every day, in our homes, at our jobs, while we're driving down the road. We ought to be worshiping God everywhere. Mm -hmm. We ought to show the salvation that we've been brought out of. We ought to sing songs. So I don't like singing. Listen, my God's worthy for me to sing. Mm -hmm. That's just how I feel about it. You say, well, I don't sing very well. That's, I don't either. You know, you all really ought to hear me when I'm bellering out. You know, I'm louder than everybody else, but I just sing it anyway because I'm excited and I love the Lord and He's worthy for me to sing. I know a lot of people don't want to sing. You know, they want to sit there and just kind of, but my God's worthy for me to sing to. Uh, I believe that with all my heart. Now, I believe that, 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 you know, somebody may not want to hear me. Guess what? They ain't never going to tell you. And if they do, you need to start praying for them. <laughs> if they say you was off key, say, I know, but the Lord loved it. That's right. You know, uh, that, that, that's the truth. Uh, I know somebody that's saying all kinds of parts, you know. They sing this part, that part, this part. They sing all of them together at once. That's okay. That's all right. I believe that just means you're double praising the Lord. You're singing both parts. Uh, but he's, we ought to worship Him because He's the true God who brings salvation. If for nothing else, my God is worthy of my worship and for me to do it the right way, for Him to be the heart of my worship and for me to turn back, if for nothing else other than He saved my soul. Amen. He saved my soul. I was a sinner on the way to hell. I was blazing a trail. And he saved me. That's worthy for me to worship him. That is worthy for me to get back to truthfully worshiping him because he is the only God. He is the only way. He died on the cross for me so that I could have eternal life. And he reached out to me. And he called me by name. And I heard it. And I accepted the gift of salvation. That's worthy for me to worship Him. Uh, I'd go to hell if it wasn't for Jesus. You'd go to hell if it wasn't for Jesus. That's worthy for us to worship Him. It says to declare His glory among the heathen. Did it say only at God's house? Oh, I told you last week, it's easy to Declaring the glory of the Lord here. Amen. If I stand up here and 
I say, God is good. Everybody here is going to say, Amen. 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 Hey, that's right. He sure is. But it said, Declare it among the heathen. You ever looked at what the definition of a heathen is? When I was growing up, my, 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 uh, my folks called me heathen. You know, they said, You're a heathen. You ain't nothing but a heathen. You know, I got two heathen kids. You know, I've all heard that all my life. I grew up thinking a heathen was just a bad kid. You know, I didn't know. But it's a godless person. Someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ. Someone who, maybe they're in a pagan religion, or maybe they have no religion at all, or maybe they just don't, you know, they don't know what they don't, they don't know what they don't know. Declare His glory to them. Amen. Tell them about Jesus. You'll be glad you did. Declare His glory among the heathen, His marvelous works among all nations. Hasn't God done some great things? He's done some really good things in my life. Uh, we have trials and we have tribulations and we lose loved ones and, 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 and difficulties come and, and we may have financial issues or we may not know how we're going to uh, pay the lights and water bill this month. We may have difficulties that we come through, but God has been so good. God always gets us through it. He always gets us through it. He's worthy of our praise. We should worship Him for great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. He also should be feared above all gods. And I, we could preach a whole nother two or three or four sermons on that right there. But I want to tell you this. Part of worshiping God is fearing God. You say, well, I'm not scared of God. That's a problem. I got a healthy respect, fear of God. I think the world needs a healthy dose of it. I think I'll go a step further. Listen to the church. The church needs a healthy fear of God. Right. And I, 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 you know, sometimes when I say things, I say, I ain't talking about Holy Spirit. I am talking about Holy Spirit. We need a healthy fear of God. Amen. Every single church, every single Christian, every single creeping, crawling thing on God's green earth needs a healthy dose of godly fear. You say, well, I fear God. I think a lot of us say that tongue too. You say, I really do fear God, but sometimes I act like I don't fear God. Sometimes I act like I fear man more. Uh, you want me to give you a really good example? And this is something that makes stomp on some toes. And our job, so well, I can't share, I can't share God, they'll fire me. Hey, guess what that is? That's fearing man more than it's fearing God. Ooh, you say, well, well, I'm scared to witness to somebody because God, God's been telling me I need to witness. I'm scared because I, I just don't know what I'm going to say. Guess what that's doing? That's letting your fears give you. Have you, got more, you have more fear of yourself and of your own fears than you do of God. I can't do that. I may, I may lose a friend. I can't do that. I've had some situations. I can't do that because I might lose my spouse. They may leave me. Guess what? I never want that to happen. Praise God, I'm not in that situation. I'll tell you something. If it comes down to a fear between someone, something, yourself, and God, choose God every time. Amen. Have a fear for the Lord. He's to be feared. Listen, He's not to be mocked. But why all the gods of the people are idols? They're nothing more than what we read about in the old times when the nation of Israel made the golden calf. You remember that story? Uh, Moses went up on the uh, uh, the mount, that mountain. Somebody, uh, come on now, Sinai. I'm glad somebody knew because it slipped my mind. Mount Sinai, and he come down, and guess they thought that God done killed Moses, and Moses done died and wouldn't come back. In that little mountain, I don't know how long it was, but in that little mountain, they done built them an altar. They done built them a golden calf. They got fear. Oh, something happened to Moses. You know. We got to build, we got to build an idol. Then Aaron, I like his answer. He said, oh, there's stuff in there. This cow come out, you know. That don't make no sense. If Moses hadn't done thrown down the tablets, he might have hit him with one. <laughs> Some of us need hit with the Ten Commandments every night. But they're just idols. But the Lord, it says, 
made the heavens. He's the real God. We ought to worship him, point one. We ought to worship him because he is the true God that brings salvation. Part number two there. Point number two, beginning at verse 27. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindred of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offspring, offering, and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth and world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. The second point, we ought to worship Him because He alone reigns. My God reigns. Uh, there's been a lot of kings on this earth reign, hasn't there? I mean, we look at, we look at, we look at history. There's been a lot of kings. Uh, well, I love history. History's my favorite subject besides the Bible, okay? But, but uh, I love history. And, and you look at different kings, and, and something that happens to almost every king or queen or whatever is they get a little power goes to their head. They, they, they get a little uh, above everybody else. And we still have dictators and things in the world today. And different things go on. And, but, but at the end of the day, you notice what I said the subject was. It was history. Because it ended. Folks, the reign of our God has never began. And it will never end. God has always been and He alone reigns. We shouldn't worship anybody else, any other man. A uh, story comes into my mind of the three Hebrew children in King Nebuchadnezzar. And He told them, He said, I'm the King. You ought to bow down and worship Me whenever these musical instruments play. You ought to bow down and worship me. Remember what they said? No king. There is not, uh, paraphrase, there's no other king but God. That's how we ought to feel today. I'm not going to worship any other person. I'm not going to worship the president. I'm not going to worship uh, the church. I'm not going to worship the pastor. I'm not going to worship the deacons. I'm not going to worship my Bible. I'm not going to worship all these other things that maybe you can put in there and say it feels good. It's a good thing. The Bible's a good thing. Guess what? It's not to be worshipped. People get in trouble with that. People, you know, we can make something a God, an idol, that starts out as a good thing. Our church is a great place. I love this place. It's not to be put in front of God. It's not to be worshipped. I love the Bible. It's not to be put in front of God. It's God's Word. We ought to treat it like it's God's Word. God speaks to us through it, but it's not God. Well, we've got uh, different th serving the community. We all serve the community, but guess what? It shouldn't come before God. Amen. God alone reigns. You think for one second that God uh, uh, can't put, uh, can't take away something that you put in front of Him? Can't knock it back down to size? <laughs> I was talking with the preacher. I won't tell you who the preacher is, but he had a, uh, I think he said he had an older preacher that was in his congregation, had retired and no longer could pastor a church and had some health issues. But he loved to go out and visit people. And uh, he went and visited this, this couple who hadn't been to church in a while. And it's one of them deals where, kind of like COVID, started out, it might have been a good excuse, you know. We, we didn't know. We didn't know what was, we thought if you get COVID, you die. And I ain't mean, COVID is real. I'm not saying COVID ain't real. But, you know, fairly soon after the COVID, the initial pandemic deal, most folks, we wasn't scared to go to Walmart. We wasn't scared to go to restaurants. We wasn't scared to do this and do that. We went back to living our lives way well, because this is America and we can do what we want to, right? But anyway, and, uh, 
what what it was was this this couple had had a kid that had gotten sick and had some health issues. Really did have some health issues, but they would do everything else. You know, they would. As a matter of fact, the kid they like said the kid played ball and, and that sort of deal. And so I mean, the kid did have health issues, but it had gotten better. You know, and he said I wouldn't do this, but he said the old preacher went to the. I was saying, you know, we really miss you at church and this and that. I said, well, yeah, you know, we, 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 it's just that they got this, they got this kid, he gets sick from time to time. And he said, the old preacher said, well, I pray the Lord would take whatever that is, whatever excuse you got away from. I wouldn't ever say that, but I'm going to tell you something. God will do it. You read the Bible. God will take away whichever, whatever you want to put in front of God. You look at the story of Abraham and Isaac. You don't think that was a test? Abraham, what would happen had Abraham said, no God, I'm not going to do it. Abraham could have said, Isaac, come before whatever it is that you would have me do. But he didn't. He did what God said. He was greatly blessed. A marriage is a beautiful thing. God instituted it. Children are a beautiful thing. I believe God gives them to us. Better not put them in front of God. Don't put them in front of God. That's where that godly fear comes in a little bit. We ought to fear God. Respect fear. Not because I'm scared of God. I ain't scared of God in the sense that I love Him. He's my Heavenly Father. Uh, uh, I, 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 I want to please Him. I want to worship Him because He's worthy. But I also fear that if I do something wrong, just like I fear my Heavenly Parents, that discipline will come. But He alone reigns. And we ought to treat him as such, that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and that he alone reigns. We should worship him because he is the true God who brings salvation. Worship him because he alone reigns. And lastly, in verse 32, through the end of the, our scripture there, it says, Let the sea roar, let the fullness thereof, and, let, and the fullness thereof, let the fields rejoice, all that is therein. Then shall the trees of wood sing out at the presence of the Lord because he cometh to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and for his mercy endures, endures forever. And say ye, save us, O God, of our salvation, and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. So, worship Him because He is the true God who brings salvation. Worship Him because He alone reigns. And worship Him because He is good. We serve a good God. I can't begin to count or to tell you about the goodness of God. He's been so good to me. He's been so good to you. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endureth forever. I've experienced the mercies of God. The goodness and the mercy of God go hand in hand. He's good and He's merciful. And He's shown us time and time and time and time and time again. And this morning at Sunday school, we were looking at Moses and how he went up to that burning bush that was Jesus, I believe, and told him to take off his sandals and stand on the holy ground. And he was there. And, and, and he told Moses what? He said, I got something for you to do. I want you to go to Pharaoh and I want you to tell him to let my people go. And I want you, Moses, to lead the nation of Israel out. Lead my people out. And Moses said, no. <laughs> you know, he said, God, I can't do that. God said, yeah, you can. Moses said, God, I, I can't even talk right. I don't even talk good. I say, I ain't, and I stutter and stuff like that. And God said, I'll be with you. He said, well, listen here, God. 
There's somebody else who can do that. As a matter of fact, I know exactly who. Aaron. Oh, he'd be a good one. I said, no, I got something else for Aaron. He'd run out of excuses, wouldn't he? He said, okay, but who am I even going to tell him sent me? He gave him that answer too. <clears throat> I've used it a bunch of times, and I said, if I was God, good thing I'm not. If I was God, I'd say, you know what? Just fall over dead right there, I'll find somebody else who'll do it. And if I uh, look back in my life, there's been times where God should have just said, all right, fall over dead right there. You come on home, you're not doing me no good. I'm going to find somebody else to do it. But praise God, He's merciful. Praise God, He's good. Look in your life, I asked you to remember the day you were saved. How many times before that day should God have said, all right, if you don't want to do it, if you don't want to accept the gift, that I'm freely giving to you. If you don't want to accept what my son did on, for you on the cross, then fall over dead right there and I'll talk to somebody else who might listen. But he was merciful towards us, wasn't he? He was good. Even whenever we didn't realize he was good. His mercy endures forever. We're going to bask, I like to say, in the glory and in the goodness and in the mercies of God. Forever. Forever. We bask in it here on earth. There's coming a day when we're going to bask in it without sin interfering. I'm looking forward to that. Worship Him because He's the true God who brings salvation. Worship Him because He alone reigns. Worship Him because He is good and lastly again. I want to reiterate it. He is the God of our salvation. You wasn't saved any other way. If you're here today and you believe you were saved any other way by the blood of the, but by the blood of Jesus Christ, I beg you to come forward and let's get it right because you wasn't saved any other way. There's only one way. The blood that was shed. Had your name on it. Had my name on it. As they drove the nails into his hands and feet, as they lifted him up, as love held him on the cross, as the blood flowed down, it was the mercy of God. And it was for you. And he loves you. And he's calling you today. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. But they didn't stop there. And they praised the Lord. When's the last time you allowed yourself to truthfully praise and worship the Lord? When's the last time that you were back in the heart of worship? You see, I've had people tell me, but you can only you can't worship God with your hands in your pockets. Or you can't worship God sitting down. Or you can't worship God uh, any other way than the way I think you ought to. And then I've heard people say the vice versa. You can't worship God with your hands in the air. You can't worship God shouting. I'm gonna tell you something. If you're doing whatever you're doing in spirit and in truth, just worship with God. Amen. And I'll tell you this. God does not look at the posture of your body when you're worshiping. He looks at the posture of your heart. I want to tell you something. And, 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 and this may be controversial, but this is the truth. I believe that the Lord's called me to preach the truth, and I'll tell you the truth. I think as missionary Baptists sometimes, we quench the Spirit more than we should. I think that sometimes the Lord may lead us to do something, but we don't want to do it because we're scared somebody's going to look at us and say something. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it in spirit and in truth, listen to that. I'll say it again. In spirit, spirit-led, and doing it the true way that I want to worship God. I don't care what nobody else says. I ain't doing it for nobody else. I'm doing it for the Lord. It's okay in my book. It's okay in my book. 
<laughs> and it's okay in God's book. Now, do I have a preference? Yeah. Is that okay to have a preference? Yeah. But what we do not need to do is say that someone, the way someone else worships is wrong if they're doing it in spirit and in truth. Uh, but we so throughout the years, we, we wanted to differentiate ourselves so far away from someone else, another group, that we went too far. It's time that we get back to the heart of worship. I want to see the church full of folks worshiping God. Amen. You ever been in a in a service where you re you really worship the Lord, and you felt like others around you really worship the Lord? Remember how good that felt. Let me jog your memory a little bit. You might have felt a little fatigued after. <laughs> you ever done that? And I'm not talking about oh I need a nap fatigue. I'm talking about you worshiped and you poured it out. I remember going through seminary and preachers preachers telling you that, well, when you preach, you, you'll be tired. I talk, I talk all the time. I'm not going to get tired whenever I'm, I'm preaching. When you're preaching the, and you're doing what God's called you to do, you get a little fatigued. I pray that we leave every Sunday a little tired, that we worship God. We met God we worshiped with God. We worshiped God. We gave Him all the praise today. And I want to tell you this. Last year, before we get out of here, we need to be worshiping God in front of our kids. We need to be worshiping God in our homes, in front of our grandkids, in front of our nieces, in front of our nephews, in front of our family, in front of our spouses, in front of uh, uh, our friends. And when we go to the grocery store, we ought to be worshiping God in front of people. I ain't talking about you, Paul Brown. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, I'm just somebody saying, what's wrong with you, son? I'm just worshiping God. And they're going to think you're a little weird. They might call it holy something. But they think you done done something, took something. But I want to tell you something. We can worship God everywhere we go. You want to know something I said? Some, I, I prayed that the Lord would put me by somebody on the airplane that I could talk to him about, talk to him about the Lord. You know, because I was already a little bit nervous, so I was like, maybe if I'm telling somebody about Jesus, it'll go by faster, and I won't have to. And maybe the Lord won't let this plane come out of the sky if I'm telling them about the Lord, you know. Uh, but, I, so I had, already, I had already prepared, and I had prayed, Lord, when they come to sit down, let them ask how I'm doing. Let them, let them just ask how I'm doing. And I'm going to tell them, I'm blessed. That's all, and that's going to start. Hopefully that'll start to happen. And I get on that airplane. I get in there before whoever's sitting with me. I'm in a window seat, which, by the way, is a terrible idea on a long flight. Because if you got to go to the bathroom like I do every now and then, you got to make them get up and all that sort of deal. But I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting for them to come. And they come, they look, this person comes in, this fellow, and he's looking, and he stops on my road, and he comes walking in, and he goes, I guess I'm with you, how you doing? Or how's it going, or something like that. And I was like, oh, yeah. All right, Lord. I said, I'm blessed. And he said, uh, as he was sitting there, he said, well, I take that you're Christian. And I said, I am. I am Christian. And uh, he said, well, me too. He said, are you, are you a preacher? I said, yes. Because then I know he said, well, I am too. You going to the ABA thing? Yes. <laughs> I was like, hey, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know. But listen, he said, just from me saying, I'm blessed. He said, well, I take that you're Christian. You, how we respond to people? Be worshiping God. How is that? Let's be worshiping God. How are you? I'm blessed. And if they say, well, that's good. Yeah, I'm just so blessed. The Lord's blessed. That's worshiping God. Well, worship Him everywhere we go. Everything we do. We've got to get back to the heart of worship. And no matter what the world does, we need to go back and say, as for me and my house, Amen. we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord. Listen, I've talked about Holly Springs, and I love Holly Springs, and I do. I, I love everybody here. I love this place. Holly Springs decided they wanted to go against what God said. said, this is how we're going to do things here at Holly Springs. I had to stand for it and said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord.
I pray that you'd take a stand today to get back to the heart of worship. You know how you get back to the heart of worship? All you got to do is lift high your voice. All you got to do is lift low your voice. All you got to do is go back to God and say, Lord, give me a heart of worship. Lord, give me the, the, the strength. Give me the courage to worship you in spirit and in truth everywhere I go. And guess what? He will. You don't have to pray, God, give me something to worship about. We just talked about just, just three things. Just three things this morning that we talked about. That's enough for us to worship Him to the end of time. And guess what? There is no end of time. It's forever and ever and ever. <clears throat> if you're here today and you've never experienced that our God is the God of salvation, the God that we've talked about all day, how He's good, how He reigns, I'd love to tell you about it. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today, it's the day to be saved. And guess what? You can walk out of here worshiping God, hopefully, with everybody else who knows Jesus Christ as their Savior. Let's all stand. As we prepare for a verse.